Are Chinese EVs actually good? Are RV all about to learn the hard way why they are so cheap? That's the question everyone throws at me. Whenever I mention BYD, MG, NEO or any of the new aims creeping into Europe and everywhere else. So in this video, I want to do what most people don't. Instead of shouting trash or takeover from the comment section, we are going to tear this down like engineers. We'll look at why they can be so cheap, what corners are and are not being cut, and how the batteries and safety stacks up and in the end, I'll tell you when I would personally trust the Chinese EV with my own money and when I would wait. Let's be real, Chinese cars come with the baggage. For years the stereotype was copycat design, low safety, plastic interiors. That reputation didn't come from nowhere. Early exports really were like that. But here's the twist. While Europe and US were arguing about whether EVs were the future, Chinese companies were already building them by the millions. They got volume, and volume is where you learn. You see what fails, you fix it, you optimize, you negotiate better supplier deals. So now we have this weird moment where a BYD Dolphin, a MG4, or a BYD Seal can undercut a lot of Western cars on price, but also show up with decent crash test scores, okay interiors, and features that didn't exist in mainstream cars five years ago. On paper, that sounds like magic. It isn't. It's math and scale. If you take nothing else from this video, remember this. They are not printing money by secretly using cardboard chassis and recycled flip flops as bushings. The big savings come from three things. First, vertical integration. Companies like BYD make their own batteries, power electronics, and in many cases, a ton of the components that Western car makers buy from suppliers. That means fewer middlemen adding their markup. Batteries are a huge chunk of EV cost. So if you own the battery factory, you own the cost structure. Second, labor and supply chain. A lot of these factories are right next to battery plants, motor plants, and electronic suppliers. Shorter shipping, less inventory, more control. Think of it like building a car inside a shopping mall where every stall sells only what you need. Third, design choices. A lot of Chinese EVs use LFP batteries instead of fancy nickel heavy chemistries. LFP has lower energy density, yes, but it's cheaper, safer, and long lasting. If you're happy with good range instead of bragging rights range, LFP is a great way to cut costs without cutting quality. Cheap doesn't automatically mean junk, but it does mean different trade-offs. So where do they actually cut corners? Let's move from fury to what you would feel living with one. In many budget Chinese EVs, you'll notice the soft touch plastics aren't everywhere. Some materials will feel harder, some panels might sound a bit more hollow. When you tap them, the seats might be slightly flatter. The sound insulation may be a step behind a premium German car. Is that low quality? It depends on what you care about. If your last car was a 15 year old hatchback, a modern Chinese EV might feel like a spaceship. If you're coming out of a high-end Audi, you'll notice the difference. On the upside, you will often see features that are usually optional in Western brands. Big screens, full LED lightings, decent ADAS, wireless phone stuff, sometimes even vehicle to load power outlets as a standard. They pack a lot of tech because the Chinese market is brutally competitive. If you don't over deliver on features, you die. The important question isn't, is every detail perfect? It's, are the important things solid? Structure, battery, brakes, safety system, battery management system? Safety and crash proof. This is where a lot of fear lives. If it's cheap, it must be unsafe. Modern Chinese EVs that are designed for export are not playing with toy safety rules. They're being homologated for Europe, Australia, and etc. Which means Euro and cap, ANC cap, and other test regimes. Cars like BYD Atto 3, MG4, new models that have gone through those tests in many cases scored very solid ratings. Good crash performance requires proper structure, crumple zones, airbag control, and strong battery protection. You can't fake that with a petty screen. The moment a car hits a barrier at 64 km per hour, the truth shows up in a slow motion. Does that mean every Chinese car is safe? No. Some models targeting only the domestic markets or 
ultra low cost segments may still cut deeper corners. But the export focused EVs that hit Europe or other strict markets are being engineered to clear those bars. Or they simply don't get in. Now as an engineer, the part I care about most is the battery and its brain. Because if the pack sucks, the whole car sucks, no matter how many ambient lights you add. Chinese companies, especially BYD and CATL powered brands, have a massive edge in batteries. They're not begging suppliers for sales. They're the suppliers. LFE packs, late cells, cell to pack designs, all that makes them extremely cost effective. The big concern people have is, what about degradation and safety? LFP chemistry handles cycles very well. That means thousands of charge cycles with relatively slow capacity fade if the BMS is well tuned. It also has better thermal stability which lowers fire risk. That's not marketing, it's chemistry. The trade is energy density. You get more weight per kilowatt hour compared to high nickel packs. But for many compact and mid-size EVs, LFP is actually a smart choice. Range is enough, cost is down, life is good. What decides whether that good chemistry turns into a good car is the BMS. How it limits fast charging, how it manages cell balancing, how it protects the pack at low and high temperatures. A sloppy BMS can ruin even the best cell. A good BMS can make a cheap pack live much longer than you would expect. Let's talk about what happens after a few years, not just in the showroom. Reports from early export cars like MG ZS EV, MG4, BYD Atto 3 show some patterns. Interiors generally hold up okay, but might show very faster than premium rivals. Softwares can be a bit quirky at launch, but over the air updates help. Suspension tuning is sometimes hit or miss, depending on whether they really tuned for European roads or just soft and floaty to please casual drivers. On the battery side, we don't have 10 years of data yet on many of these cars, but early signs from taxis and fleet users in China suggest the LFP packs, which when managed decently hold up very well. Not perfect, but not falling off a cliff. So again, the story is more mixed, but improving fast. Some models are absolutely good enough quality for everyday use. Some early or cheap ones still feel rough. Here's where things get spicy. Chinese EVs force Western brands into a corner. On one side, you have customers looking at a BYD Dolphin or an MG4 that costs way less than a similar size European EV, but gives them solid range okay safety and modern technology. On the other side, you have legacy brands still trying to cover high overheads, dealers, slower development cycles, and older platforms. For customers, the challenge is, do you trust a relatively new brand with less long-term track record in your market in exchange for a lower price and more features? Or do you pay a premium for a badge you know a dealer network closer to home and maybe a more predictable resale value. There's no one right answer, but pretending Chinese EVs are all junk is just denial at this point. They're good enough to be dangerous competition. Here's the core of it. A cheap car is one where you feel the cost cutting everywhere. A cheap car is one where you feel cost cutting everywhere. Things break early, range collapses, software is a mess, you regret it. A high value car is one where the automaker focused on the stuff that actually matters and relax on the things you can live with. Maybe the door pockets are hard plastic, but the pack is solid, the BMS is smart, the crash structure is good, and the car does what it is promised for. Many of the new Chinese EVs land in that second category. They're not magical, they're not perfect, but, but they have figured out where to spend and where to save. Back, batteries, motors, inverters, safety structure, more money. Extra insulation, super fancy leather, ultra quiet glass, less money. If you judge them only by it's cheap so it must be amazing, you'll also get burned. You have to look at the engineering choices. If I had to sum it up in one line, Chinese EVs are no longer cheap instead of quality. They're aggressively priced because of scale and design choices. With quality that ranges from okay to genuinely impressive, depending on the brand and model. You still need to do your homework. 
check crash tests, look for battery chemistry, read early owner reports, pay attention to how often the brand pushes software updates, and how they handle problems. But the old idea that a Chinese car is automatically a tin box is dead. The real question now is which brand will turn their current advantage into lasting trust? And which ones will cut too deep and confirm everyone's worst fear? And behind every one of those cars, Chinese or not, is a BMS quietly deciding how fast you can charge, how far you can go, and how long that pack will live. If you want to understand that brain instead of guessing, check the BMS course link in the description. Thank you.